Hello everyone. It's been months since I've been able to do a video. While 2020 has been a year that many of us would like to forget, and thankfully my absence was mostly caused by other demands on my time. My family has moved to a much darker sky location from Bortle 7 to Bortle 4 last month, and the search occupied a good chunk of the year. Then in September, I was invited to participate in a remote observatory in West Virginia, giving me access to even darker skies, and that's also taken up a lot of time. Now that 2020 is ending, and the demands of house hunting, moving, and unpacking are at least mostly behind, there's a little time to talk about astronomy. Thankfully, despite all that 2020 threw at us, there was some time for imaging, especially earlier in the year. In this video, we'll be doing a quick retrospective of the year. But before we get to that, I want to thank everyone who's come along on this journey with me. I never expected that more than 500 of you would want to come along on this journey. My goal for these videos is to share my love of astronomy with anyone who is interested, and it's also helped me learn a lot along the way. That so many of you find them worth your time is humbling. Our next video will hopefully be following this one fairly soon, and is actually from a viewer request on doing manual multi-session processing, so stay tuned for that. Now let's take a look at what targets I was able to image despite what 2020 could throw at us. The first image was M33. This is 14.7 hours of RGB data acquired between late October 2019 and January 2020. I went through about a bazillion versions of this, trying to bring everything I could out of it. Eventually I got to the point where it was qualitatively different from Rev to Rev, but whether it was better or not was a matter for debate. I was pretty happy with how this came out. My original plan was also to acquire some hydrogen alpha data for this, but my filter had not yet arrived, so I decided to move on to another target and work on this. That target was the Perseus double cluster. This was a short integration, only 24 minutes, but it captured the essence of what it looked like to me in the eyepiece without being overwhelmed by stars. Unlike the last image, where I was consciously trying to get as much detail as I could, this one was deliberately trying not to be aggressive. I actually acquired this data in September 2019, but didn't get a chance to process it until January 2020. Next up was the Rosette Nebula. This was my first narrowband image as my filters had finally arrived. This was 14.2 hours, captured in mid to late January. Now that I had narrowband filters, I had to learn how to process narrowband data, and it was actually easier to process. The only real challenge was deciding how to combine the data. I opted for a non-traditional combine that produced a color balance I liked. For more detail, see the video I did on this image. Now that the narrowband filters had arrived, I could do the H-alpha version of M33 I had originally planned. I added six hours of H-alpha, and found that combining H-alpha with RGB was not as straightforward as I'd hoped. I wanted the H-alpha data to make the nebulae in M33 more prominent and obvious, but my combines kept tinting the entire galaxy red. Ultimately, I came to a more relaxed combine that mostly did what I wanted. Eventually, I want to revisit this, but overall I was pretty happy with how it came out. My next attempt was Comet C2017 T2 Panstars. This was my first real failure of the year. I used my mono camera and didn't realize how little the, the comet was moving from frame to frame. Ultimately, I couldn't produce the image I wanted and settled for this animation showing the movement of the comet over a few hours. There's also a video about this one if you want the gory details. The next image, IC5068, was entirely acquired in September 2019, but I wasn't happy with it at first, so I never shared it. Eventually, though, it started to grow on me, so I finally decided to post it in February during an extended cloudy period. This was 14 hours of RGB data. The next image was the Sol Nebula. This was another narrowband image presented in an SOH palette. I really like the blues and purples that this produced. And to my eye, the soul looks more like a baby rhinoceros, but your mileage may vary. This was almost 10 hours of data from February and March 2020. Next was M81 and M82 in HARGB. I had done this pair using a DSLR in my earliest attempts, and I knew I had to return to it. 
Even then, I knew my result wasn't very good. I'm much happier with this one. More integration time to help, a bit over 24 hours in this case. And the longer focal length compared to the 200mm lens also helped. Though even my 40... 480mm focal length refractor is a bit wide for this pair. I was still pretty happy with this, but it was still hard to do the combine. Still, I was psyched about the amount of detail that small refractor was able to capture. Next up was the Leo triplet. This was an RGB image that I started acquisition for in April and finally finished in June, but only because I could no longer see it from my location. I had planned to get much more data than the 11 hours I managed, and because I didn't realize I was running out of time until fairly late, I have much more red than blue or green, and blue was really shortchanged. But despite that, I was pretty happy with how this came out. Again, it's a fairly small target for my refractor, but it was great to see what I could do with challenging data. Next up was another target I had done before, the Western Veil Nebula. I had pretty badly butchered this in my first attempt. This time, I was planning to use narrowband and get data for all three filters, but I decided to do an HOO version before I had all the S2 data I wanted. So I ended up with this. This is 7.2 hours, and I was thrilled with how it came out. Eventually, I was able to get the S2 data I had been missing, and now, armed with 12 and a half hours of data, I did this version using an HOS palette. I still can't decide which version I like better. The first has more natural color and shows subtle detail better, but this version also works really well for me. On any given day, I might prefer either one. The Pac-Man Nebula was next. This was my first image from the remote observatory in West Virginia, but this isn't using my equipment, but the observatory owner's fantastic gear, an astrophysics 305mm Riccardi Honders telescope, along with an FLI ML16200 CCD camera. This had a slightly narrower field of view than my telescope camera combination, but a finer image scale of 1.1 arc seconds per pixel compared to the 1.6 my gear produces. This was 11 hours of data from a much darker sky, a uh, Bortle 2 ish compared to my Bortle 7, and so was very easy to process in comparison to most of my images. There is something to be said for high quality equipment in dark skies, no doubt about it. The next and final image for 2020 was LBN 581 also known as NGC 7822. This is a lesser known emission nebula in Cepheus, but it deserves more attention. This is 25 hours of narrowband data using the same gear as the last image, presented in an HSO palette. It was also the simplest processing I've ever done. I was also honored to get a top pick nomination on Astrobin for this one, thanks to whoever instigated that. That was really unexpected. This concludes our overview of 2020. It started out as a, at a fairly frenetic pace, but then weather really limited sky time. Then, in the late summer, I was invited into that remote observatory, and that took a while to get everything running there. Then the move happened and consumed my life. What will 2021 bring? That's a really good question. One way or another, my plan is to have my own observatory, either on the site in West Virginia or here at home. The original motivation for moving was to get to darker skies and to put up an observatory. It was only after we made the offer on the house that the West Virginia opportunity presented itself, and dark as my sky is compared to where I was, the sky at the observatory is quite a bit darker still. It was an easy choice to say yes to, to the invitation. I'll let you know what happens, and eventually we should have some build videos. The only question is whether it will be here or in West Virginia. The past year has been a hard one for so many people. I don't think any of us expected to be facing a pandemic like this in our lifetimes. I hope that with vaccines starting to roll out, that life can return to something closer to normalcy soon. Take care and Happy New Year. I'll leave you with a slideshow of my overview of 2020. Clear skies.